In this video, we're going to look at the way that X-linked genes are inherited through generations. An X-linked gene is just a gene that is found on the X chromosome. So females have two copies of the X chromosome, one from their mother and one from their father, and then males have one copy of the X chromosome that they got from their mother and the Y chromosome that they got from their father. As you can see, the X chromosome is considerably larger than the Y chromosome, and because of that, the Y chromosome doesn't carry all of the genes that the X chromosome does. So not only do males only get one copy of the X chromosome, but the vast majority of genes, they only get one copy of that gene as well. Because there are um, different opportunities for females and males to get certain uh, combinations of X-linked genes, when you cross males and females of different phenotypes, you're actually going to come out with offspring where the female and the male offspring actually have different likelihoods of getting a certain phenotype or genotype. Let's look at some examples. X-linked genes can be recessive or some can be dominant. And so we're going to look at some examples of X-linked recessive disorders. So some examples of disorders that are found on the X chromosome and follow X-linked recessive pattern of inheritance are hemophilia, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, adrenal leukodystrophy, and also red-green color blindness. We're going to look specifically at hemophilia A as our example of an X-linked recessive genetic disorder. Hemophilia A results in your body's inability for your blood to clot. So if you get a cut or a bruise, there will be excessive bleeding externally and internally. So there's a gene that codes for a protein called factor VIII, and that's just a protein that helps your blood clot. There are two alleles for this, the normal factor VIII protein gene, and then there's the mutated or non-functioning factor VIII protein or gene that results in a non-functioning factor VIII protein. And that will result in hemophilia. So the normal F8 protein gene is dominant over the hemophilia gene. Because males and females have different um, numbers of X chromosomes, they can have different genotypes as well. So, females can be homozygous, dominant, and therefore have normal um, phenotype. They can be heterozygous, right, and have one of each allele, but since normal is dominant over hemophilia, they would show the normal phenotype. However, they would also carry the hemophilia gene and could possibly pass that on to their offspring. Female could also have and be homozygous for the hemophilia allele, in which case she would have hemophilia. Males, however, since they only have one copy of the X chromosome, can either be normal, right, with a normal allele on their singular X chromosome, or if they have the hemophilia allele on that X chromosome, they would have, um, they would show the hemophilia phenotype. Note, again, there is no superscript, there's no allele on the Y because the Y chromosome doesn't even have that gene on it. So let's look at some Punnett squares to see how hemophilia is passed through generations. So in my example, in my parental generation, I have a female who is homozygous for um, normal and a male who has hemophilia. When they meet, and mate, right? We fill in our Punnett square, we drop these genes down and these genes over. You can see that 100% of the males and the females show the normal phenotype because they all have a copy of the normal dominant allele. But you'll also note that all females do carry a copy of the hemophilia gene. And so if we bred a female who was heterozygous, 
right here. Let's make these F1s with a normal male. Then, right, we do our Punnett square. You can see that um, all of our females are normal, again, right? Uh, but one is homozygous for normal, and one is heterozygous and normal. Whereas the males, since they get their X from their mother, 50% of the males have the normal allele, and the other 50% have the recessive hemophilia allele. When you are answering questions that have to do with um, X-linked genes in their offspring, you want to pay very close attention to whether the question is asking what percent of children will have a certain genotype or phenotype versus what percent of males or what percent of females. So for example, this question or this um, Punnett square, I could ask, what percent of males would have hemophilia, right? And so these are the only males, right? So if we cover the females, then half, 50% of the males would have hemophilia. If I asked what percent of children or offspring would have hemophilia, we would look at the whole set and only one in four, 25% of the offspring as a whole, would have hemophilia. So just be careful when you're looking at questions that involve egg-linked genes. Not all X-linked traits are um, recessive. The ones that are recessive are most often found in boys. But there are also X-linked dominant traits. And here's a good example uh, in fruit flies. So fruit flies can have actually several wing shapes, but the wild or normal um, version of the wings, which you see most commonly, right, that's what wild means, are just normal and they lay nicely over the back of the fruit fly. Curly winged fruit flies actually have wings that like whoop, go out to the side and kind of curl up. So in this example, my female is going to be, she's going to have normal wings, and she's going to be homozygous for the wild type, right, which is normal. Don't forget when we discuss, or when we do notation with wild type, we often use this plus sign right here. So just remember that means wild. And then in this case too, we have a male with curly wings. So since curly wing is the mutant type, we actually give it a letter. And so he only has one X chromosome, and it has the curly-winged allele on it. So let's see what happens when we mate these two. So again, our P generation, right? We have a wild-type female and a curly-winged male. And when we breed them, right, 100% of our females have curly wings. So these are our females here, and both boxes have um, their heterozygous, but C, curly, is the phenotype that shows up. 100% of the males, so all the males, have normal shaped wings. So the conclusions that we can come to about the mode of inheritance for, ex or for curly wings, one is that the trait is X-linked. Right? And we know this because the males and females have, they are segregated and have different um, percentages and ratios of genotypes and phenotypes. We also can conclude that excellent, I'm sorry, the curly wings is a dominant trait because the heterozygous females, though they have one curly winged allele and one wild allele, actually show the curly winged phenotype. What I would like you to do is if we have a, this is a heterozygous curly winged female from the previous board, all right, and then this is a wild type male. If we cross them, so I've already set this up for you, but what I'd like you to do is try and fill these boxes in, right, complete the Punnett square, and then analyze it and figure out what percentage of 
um, each type of phenotype, so curly-winged female, normal-winged female, curly-winged males, and normal-winged males are there. Give it a try.